Hi, Russ of Aquarimax here. Today we're going to get a close look at two species of isopods and then using the macro lens we'll get an even closer look. The species on the left is Armadillidium gestroi or gestroi and they're gaining some popularity in the hobby. It's not really surprising as they are very vividly patterned. They remind me a little bit of Armadillidium klugai but instead of having the white and yellow spots they have some sort of triangular or wedge-shaped yellow markings and then the skirt instead of being red is kind of a whitish color. When they're very very small here is some footage that I took when I first got these they were all very very small this is through a jeweler's loop and they had the same pattern as you can see they seem to have that throughout their lives. On the other hand on the right we have Armadillidium vulgare of strain that I've been working on. I collected an exceptional individual along with some other fairly highly marked individuals a few years ago and thought well maybe I can separate this trait out and I've been working with them and though the trait does seem to appear to some degree in quite a few individuals in the colony, not all of them, the trait sometimes seems to disappear with age. There are some that re retain it into adulthood and others that do not it also seemed to be, seems to be linked to uh, sex. In other words, females tend to carry this trait and the males don't seem to. So these are probably all females or most of them anyway. As you can see, the pattern is not nearly as clearly defined, although there are some with a fair amount of yellowish coloration. It's not anywhere near as clearly defined as it, as it is in Armadillidium uh, gestroi. So let's take a look really close up and see what we can see with the macro lens. The pattern is absolutely fantastic when it's close up, don't you think? I have to admit I have a weakness for high yellow isopods and so when there was a local hobbyist who was able to obtain some of these and was willing to trade me for some of them, I jumped at the chance. Now some of these are, are nearing maturity and we'll probably start breeding soon some of the larger ones. Some of them are a little way off yet from that but I really really love this pattern. It is incredible. There was one of them in here. Let me see if I can find it. That had kind of an aberration on the pattern. The yellow spots persisted down into the skirt in one part of the skirt. There's one that's almost doing it but there was one that had even more than that. Let me see if I can find it. Here's one. It has the yellow marking all the way down on the tip of one of the sections of the skirt. That is pretty amazing. It looks like it's only on one side. Interesting. I'd like to take a moment to thank our Patreon supporters. We really appreciate everything you do for the channel, probably more than you know. So once again, thank you. And now let's take a look at the Armadillidium vulgare high yellow. You can see that the pattern is much more dispersed. They're not, not very tight markings, they're kind of spread out and... Oh, this one has, has a fairly tight pattern there. That looks pretty nice. This one is similar to the one I collected in the wild and I hope it maintains this, uh, these markings into adulthood. Some of them are a little less clean. Still a pretty cool pattern though. Oh, this one's overturned itself. So as you can see there's a lot of variety in the tone of the color and in the nature of the markings. Some of them are nearly covered in the markings but they're not very distinct and others are quite distinct like this one. Pretty interesting. Some of them seem to have sort of a translucent quality to them as if there's a more of a cover over the pattern and then others seem to have the pattern more at the surface. I don't know what, what kind of genetics is going on here. This, this one's nearly got the pattern everywhere but I'm not sure it's going to keep that into adulthood. We'll just have to see. Overall I think they look pretty cool and I'm really hoping I'll be able to get this strain established in a more systematic way over time. It's been a long process but I feel like I have made some progress. I have an idea I want to 
ask you about. I've been thinking of doing a tour of every single species of isopod that I keep with the macro lens. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. If this video has sparked your interest in isopods, I'll put some links in the description to help you get started if you want to keep your own. I'll also put a link at the end of the video to another isopod video you can check out. And thanks for watching today. I post videos every Wednesday and Friday, all on aquarium and vivarium pets. Please feel free to share, rate, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then click the bell icon so you don't miss my next video. I could just stare at these for hours, but I wouldn't want to dry them out. There's a limit to how long they can hang out outside of their enclosure before they start getting uncomfortable with the low humidity.